Well, this noon rain in some local areas. Some folks already seen some showers. Justin Horn standing by with the latest. And it's time to head to the polls. Early voting starting today. We're going to take a look at some of the issues on the ballot coming up. Live from Case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. We start the noon with some breaking news. The search for a missing Texas Army National Guardsman is over. This comes after specialist Bishop Evans' body was found. That's according to Congressman Tony Gonzalez's office. The 22-year-old disappeared last Friday. The Texas Military Department says Evans selflessly attempted to help two migrants who appeared to be drowning while they were crossing the Rio Grande illegally. Now, Evans, a specialist and artilleryman from... Arlington. He served in the guard for almost two years. Some much needed rain falling all over many of us. If you haven't gotten rain yet, there's still a chance. We now. actually heard it in the newsroom. It's coming oh, down yeah. pretty hard. All right, let's take a live look out of the Alamo City right now. Can we see much out there? Okay. Got some rain out there. And drops on live cam. This is exactly the kind of rain that we needed and that we like. It's just some good downpour so far. Not a lot of severe weather. Just some healthy rainfall. And as we look across the city of San Antonio, we're seeing this is all lifting south to north. There are some lightning strikes mixed in here, so it could be a little bit loud. The heaviest of the rain right now is on the city's northeast side. So if you're watching us from Shirts, Selma, up towards Garden Ridge, uh, Converse, you're seeing quite a bit of heavy rain at this hour, and there's going to be some pockets here where it gets uh, pretty heavy. In fact, let's stop the radar here, and what I'll do is uh, we'll put the rainfall rates on here and see just how much rain we're getting. And we can estimate that through the radar. And where you see some of these purple colors, we're talking five to six inches per hour. That doesn't mean you're going to get five to six inches, but it does mean that it will come down pretty heavy and that you may get some minor street flooding in places like Converse, Shirts, Selma, Live Oak. These are all areas that are in line to see that heavy rain, 35 and then the, there along uh, 1604 on the city's northeast side. So something to watch out for is going to be some of this minor street flooding. But as I mentioned, for the most part, this is just good, healthy rain and exactly what the doctor ordered when it comes to our drought situation. There are also more showers developing on the city's west side. You see there along Highway 90, 410 down towards Somerset, seeing some heavier pockets of rain. We've had a few severe storms out west. Uh, those are no longer severe, but we're seeing some of that energy work east and that could enhance our rain chances a little bit more as we get into the afternoon, even here around San Antonio. So we're going to keep rain chances in the forecast. It's also cool. 68 degrees right now. That's behind a cold front. You see 80s out ahead of it, but 60s for most of us here in the hill country in San Antonio, and it stays that way into the afternoon. Temperatures will not budge much from where they are now. So our forecast, good chances of rain will keep temperatures in the 60s throughout the afternoon. 70% chance of rain this evening. Expect a wet evening commute or when you go pick up the kids from school, it will be damp. And that goes into tonight, even into tomorrow morning. We'll talk much more about the forecast and when all this rain ends coming up in just a bit. Ursula. Looks great. Thank you, Justin. San Antonio police are saying that someone fired shots from outside, wounding a man inside his home. And right now they're still trying to figure out who that person was. The shooting happened at the 500 block of G Street, not too far from Interstate 10 and Martin Luther King Drive. Katrina Weber reports the man who was shot is now healing up at a hospital. At a little after four in the morning, there is very little sleep going on in the Seaside neighborhood. San Antonio police, along with seven other people who were inside this home in the 500 block of G Street, are trying to make sense of what happened. An eighth person, a 59 year old man, was hit by gunfire sprayed at the home as he prepared to go to bed. Police say the shooter most likely was in a pickup. The victim was in a front room and was hit in his arm and belly. After he was rushed to a hospital, investigators stayed behind collecting evidence and statements from witnesses. You can tell just from the outside of this house that this is where a child lives, but that didn't seem to matter to the shooter. Police tell us there was a baby in there at the time of the shooting. No one but the man was hit. His wounds were not considered life threatening, according to officers at the scene. They also were not sure whether he was the intended target or why the shooter took aim at this home. Police expect they will find answers after they find the shooter. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. One month after a woman was shot and killed, police are still trying to figure out who is responsible. So that's where you can come in. Officers hoping someone can point them in the right direction. Police tell us back on March 27th, 28-year-old Chelsea Eccles was parked in her car. 
She was meeting with someone on a Judson Road near Fountain Wood on the northeast side. That's when officers tell us that several gunmen approached them, started shooting. The suspects then took off in a silver sedan. Eccles died on the scene. If you know anything about this case, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. Today, voters will start deciding whether to lower some property tax bills, who to elect to their municipal and school districts, and whether to approve some bonds. Early voting for the May 7th election is officially underway. One major thing on the ballot, San Antonio's five-year, $1.2 billion bond program. It's been broken down into six propositions, and for the first time, one of those propositions includes affordable housing. If approved by voters, $150 million would be slotted toward more affordable housing with a focus on helping lower income households. Another big proposition decides whether $471.6 million should be spent on streets, bridges, and sidewalks. It's something Mayor Ron Nuremberg said in February is important to the city. Uh, the, the big takeaway for me uh, on this bond is that we are uh, advancing the very basics uh, of our community, you know, streets, sidewalks, drainage priorities uh, better than we have in any previous bond cycle. Overall, 183 projects are included in the bond. Early voting runs through May 3rd. Polling hours are from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. this week. The last day to apply for a mail-in ballot is tomorrow. There's more information on our website, or you can just scan the QR code that takes you right to the page. Also on KSAT.com, information on the runoff election that is happening next month. Today is actually the deadline to register to vote in that election. State Representative Ina Mianjadez and Judge Peter Sakai, well, one of them will be the Democratic candidate for Bear County Judge. The runoff slated for May 24th. Early voting during the runoff will start on May 16th and will go through May 20th. The winner of that runoff will face Republican candidate Trish DeBerry in November. New this noon, the New York State Attorney General announcing that former President Donald Trump will be held in contempt of court. That's according to a tweet by Letitia James. She is saying that he must pay $10,000 a day for every day that he defies the court's order to turn over his financial documents. This comes amid an ongoing investigation into the Trump Organization's business practices. Attorney General James is investigating whether the company misstated the values of its real estate properties in order to obtain favorable loans and tax deductions. Now to Ukraine and the meeting between top-ranking Biden administration officials and Ukrainian President Zelensky. The U.S. announcing it will provide another package to Ukraine, this time worth $300 million. Meanwhile, Russia now focusing their attack on the eastern part of Ukraine. Thousands of Ukrainians are still trapped. ABC's Ike Jachi explains. Two months into Russia's war, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and Secretary of State Antony Blinken meeting face-to-face -face with President Zelensky in a secret meeting in Kiev, America's highest-level meeting with Ukraine since the war started, Austin detailing the U.S. objectives. We want to see uh, Ukraine uh, remain a sovereign uh, country, a democratic country, able to protect its, uh, uh, its sovereign territory. Uh, we want to see Russia... Uh, uh, weakened uh, to the degree that it can't uh, do the kinds of things that uh, it has done uh, in, in invading Ukraine. The showing of support underscored by the announcement of U.S. diplomats returning to Ukraine in the coming weeks. Also, a new military aid package, a $165 million sale of ammunition, along with more than $300 million in additional aid. Meanwhile, the new Russian offensive showing no sign of slowing down. In the southern coastal city of Odessa, its mayor saying the latest missile attack killed eight people, including a three-month-old. And in the port city of Mariupol, Russia launching fresh airstrikes on a steel plant where an estimated 1,000 people are sheltering, along with about 2,000 Ukrainian fighters. These latest attacks occurring in areas Russia says it wants to establish full control. However, British authorities saying Ukraine has stopped attacks in several areas and that poor morale and a limited time to re-equip is negatively impacting Russian troops. A top Ukrainian official telling ABC News 200,000 Ukrainians have been forcibly deported into what she calls filtration camps in Russia. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington.
Today, a local organization working to gather more donations for Ukraine, specifically much needed medical supplies. Ukrainian San Antonio started in 2014 as a way to preserve Ukrainian culture and heritage. But since the start of the war, this organization has been working to rally the local community and gather donations for those fighting overseas. The organization says they're proud of the San Antonio community and the way they've stepped up. However, recently those donations have slowed down. We really appreciate San Antonio community and we explain that Ukraine fight not just for ourselves. Today's medical supply drive ends at 3.15 this afternoon. You still have some time. You can drop off your supplies at UT Health San Antonio at 7703 Floyd Curl Drive. All right, we still got a lot ahead on news at noon. Yes, the NFL draft is coming this Thursday, but don't worry, we got a lot of football to already talk about right here in the Alamo City. We're going to explain. All right, welcome back. Whoa, we got rained. <laughs> you know, that's the fun thing about uh, today's weather, Justin, is that one minute it stops and it soaks into the ground, yep. and then we get a, a fresh batch in an hour or so. It's just good downpours. And it, like I said earlier, it's exactly what we need. Hopefully we get some good rainfall totals and it does soak in around the area. The aquifer hasn't responded yet, but it will hopefully tomorrow. It's down two tenths of a foot. Pollen count, mold and oak are still high. Good rain though, we'll wash some of that oak out. Hopefully that number's lower tomorrow. Molds may jump up, just a heads up there. There's a look at the radar. This is what we're tracking, storms, and especially on the northeast side. We're going to track those for you, let you know about how much rainfall you can expect too. coming up. Welcome back. Happy Monday. So after a weekend of kind of will they, won't they rain kind of thing, we have rain today. I got to tell you, too, I was uh, riding horses this weekend and there were areas where the ground was so cracked I had to avoid it to go around for fear that my horse's hooves were going to go through the cracks. So this is fabulous. It's welcome. I mean, we, we needed this in the worst way. And it's the good kind of rain, as I said. That, not a lot of severe weather, just some good downpours. Hopefully we don't see a lot of flooding, although I think when we get batches of rain like this, we could see some minor street flooding, and that's uh, probably the case here up on the northeast side. We were detailing this a little bit earlier. A nice area of pretty heavy rain working its way up I-35, and we'll pause the radar here, and I can put a track on this, and this will eventually work its way up towards uh, New Braunfels. We'll, we'll say it's going uh, about 15 miles per hour or so. So when you're talking uh, Psalms, that'll be about 1227. And there's a lot of names on there. You can pick out your, your town. But New Braunfels, I'd say somewhere probably around 1230 or so, as this works in your direction. So be on the lookout for some good heavy rain. Again, some minor street flooding could be a problem as, uh, as this lifts off to the uh, north and the east. Although we're not expecting widespread flash flooding. It's when you get the you know clusters like this that you can start to see some problems. Also, why don't we do this? Let's look at uh, the rainfall totals uh, from this particular cell and then from rain that we've already seen. That yellow color there will query that. And you can see that we've already picked up maybe close to two inches there around the shirts area. So again, it's raining about six to seven inches per hour, but you can pick up a quick two inches out of this. And that's gonna be the case Selma shirts up towards the New, Br New Braunfels area as that lifts off to the north and east. Now let's look at the rest of San Antonio here because we're still getting some other areas of good rain. Uh, just behind that, around Elmendorf, just west of Lavernia, seeing another good cell there. Not a lot of lightning with this, but just good rain. Moving up towards Atkins and St. Hedwig. And then within the city itself, on the uh, west side here around John Jay High School, Memorial High School, seeing some good rain almost out towards SeaWorld and then back down 35 towards Foreign Army and Lytle getting some good rain. This is all also lifting off to the north, almost due north at this point. So this is going to lift up towards the SeaWorld area and uh, seeing some rain around Mitchell Lake. And then as we go north, most of uh, Stone Oak quiet for right now, but you're going to get another batch of rain that's lifting north. And that's some of the rain we saw there around the airport. So it's going to be this off and on stuff most of the day today, even up towards uh, Bernie. You're getting some very heavy rain now with a few lightning strikes embedded there. It's great to see how widespread this is as we zoom out. 
uh, all of San Antonio at this point has had the opportunity to get some rain. And then as we go west, uh, we're also seeing some of that heavier rain. We've seen some stronger storms out near Del Rio, another place that has needed some rain. And this is moving east. All of that to say that this is just a good widespread rain along a cold front. Our forecast shows that we'll see more of that as we get into this evening. This is around midnight, still showing some showers, maybe a couple storms, and this may continue into tomorrow morning as well. So the morning commute, just like this evening's commute, could be fairly damp. As far as rainfall goes, Look, it's going to be patchy. Not everyone's going to get a huge number, but I think on average, maybe around an inch or so. And there could be some isolated two inches, as we showed you there on the northeast side of town. It just depends on if you get stuck underneath one of those heavier batches of rain. Here's what to plan for. Widespread rainfall, half an inch, maybe up to two inches. Uh, with some pockets of maybe heavier numbers. Messy driving conditions, especially for the evening commute. We'll watch for some of that street flooding and there could be a couple strong storms, although we're not looking for a lot of severe weather today. Right now, 68 degrees with rain coming down. Northerly winds at 13. That front has brought in some cooler air. 64 Kerrville, 68 San Antonio. South of the front, we're still in the 80s. 82 Catula, 85 Beville. Most of San Antonio now, now within the cooler air, and I don't think those temperatures will budge much with uh, that front continuing to move south. And it's along this front, by the way, where we're seeing that widespread rain, and there is that outside chance for a strong storm today, isolated severe storm possible. So here's our KSAT 12 hour forecast 69 degrees, 3 p.m., 70% chance of rain, 70% chance at 7 o'clock, 65. We'll go 64 at 10 p.m. Rain chances taper off a little bit overnight, but not much. It's not until tomorrow morning that we really see the rain start to go away. 69 on your Tuesday, 79 Wednesday, 85 Thursday. Warmer by the weekend, but we've got some more rain chances, more storms possible by Saturday and Sunday. Thank you so much, Justin. All right, a special presentation over the weekend. San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame. We're going to introduce you to our newest inductees. And of course, we got football, Ursula. Kind of. We're going to explain. <laughs> Welcome back. Starting off with some soccer. San Antonio FC Red Hot right now. One of the top teams in the USL. Second in the Western Conference. A 6-1 record Saturday night. Beating New Mexico United 1-0 for the first time ever on the road. And here was the sole goal. Justin Dillon scoring the game's only goal. Happened to be the first, the team's first converted penalty kick of the season. And you really have to hand it to the SAFC defense and goaltender Jordan Farr. Now three straight clean sweeps in the USL competition. Now, if you're keeping track, San Antonio has now won three games in an eight-day period. And state focus has been something the team has embraced as mentality monsters. So what exactly does that mean? It's easy to say you're a mentality monster if you're playing once a week, but this is where you really show what you're made of. So I think we all took that and we're like, you know what, this is this is the grind game. This is where you need to get the points and show what you're really about. And I think as a team collectively, we just came out and proved that San Antonio is here to stay. I mean, we preach um, about being mentality monsters. You know, we have to be cohesive, ultra competitive and resilient every single game. And, and the guys do that. And I'm just so proud of them to have that mentality. San Antonio is here to stay. So, what's next? Taking on a Monterey Bay FC Saturday, 7.30 here at home at Toyota Field. All right, speaking of here at home, four new members from the class of 2022 entering the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame Saturday evening. Former WNBA San Antonio Silver Stars All-Star and NCAA champion, Sophia Young-Malcolm. We have 12-year NFL veteran N.D. Kalu and Baylor University track and field all-American Natalie and Nalepa all attending the induction ceremony at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center while iconic high school football coach, the late George Pasterchik. He was represented by his son and daughter, Steve and Georgia Bartlett. With an English degree from Rice, I don't have the words for this because I knew it was special. I knew it was going to be a big event, but now that I'm seeing the facilities, seeing the people who came out and everything that was put into this event, this is San Antonio showing everyone how, how great we do things here in the city. Really excited for the people that he worked with and he worked for. Uh, all these young athletes who aren't very young anymore. <laughs> it, it's been fun just walking around here and, and catching up with some of the people that he was a true role model for. 
All right, UTSA head coach Jeff Trailer right there with the UTSA hat on. He was in attendance, and of course, NCAA champion Keanu Williams, both honored for their recent achievements representing the Alamo City just last year. All right, so Ursula, did you know San Antonio has an arena football team? I did. There you go. A lot of people don't, but now they should. So they've taken up an old popular name from San Antonio's past, the San Antonio Gunslingers. Now, they had their season opener this weekend at the Freeman Coliseum. They did lose 44-36, to but the Gunslingers, they play in the National Arena League, led by head coach Fred Shaw. He used to play for the San Antonio Talons. Talons. Now, this is the Gunslingers' second season, but their first playing at the Freeman Coliseum because last year, arrangements all changed because of COVID. Yeah, it was supposed to be the Freeman, and then like at the very last second, they used it as the COVID center. So it was a lot of scrambling, trying to find a place to play. We ended up playing at the Rose Palace. I mean, fun experience, you know, gunslingers playing in like a little horse barn or whatever. It was, it was cool, but I mean, being in the Freeman this year is uh, very exciting for sure. Gunslingers back in action this Saturday night, 7 p.m. at the Freeman. You can find all about the team, SanAntonioGunslingers.com. And it, it's reminiscent of the Commanders. Remember we had the, the AAF here? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the rules are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, you know, it's a different sport almost. Once the leg heals, I'm going to try out. Justin Horn and yeah. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. His leg's still in a cast. Yeah, I can be QB. The... Justin, wide receiver, 6'4". He's got it. Randy Moss. Lock him in. Okay. <laughs> I wish you could have shown Justin's moves over there. <laughs> you need your Achilles. I know. One day at a time. One step at a time. We'll get there. <laughs> Smartphones. They have so many uses, but they are not cheap. And neither are their repairs. So there's some new legislation that wants to change that. Coming up today at 512 in your side's Marilyn Moritz explains what Congress is considering to help you fix your phone on your own versus dishing out dollars for what should be an easy repair. I am going to call this the most beautiful day of the year thus far <laughs> in 2022. I, I got a point. Yeah, I, we needed rain, Justin. So is this uh, is this what we needed? Absolutely, it's exactly what we needed. The the grass is going to be a little greener next uh, next week. The rest of the week, I should say. And, and this is uh, this is just good rain for the most part. We have not seen a lot of severe weather. There have been a few warnings. You get out towards Valverde County, but nothing here around San Antonio. Uh, just some good downpours. We're starting to see a few lightning strikes here and there. This batch of heavy rain that we were talking about earlier on the northeast side is now working its way into uh, New Braunfels. So heavy rain will be uh, there uh, probably within the next few minutes. And you're going to see some lightning strikes with that. And there could be some minor street flooding in and around the city of New Braunfels as this lifts off to the northeast. Same for Smithson Valley, Garden Ridge, Selma. The rain is starting to come to an end, although we're seeing some back building there. Uh, back into the city of San Antonio. We just saw some showers uh, and storms pass over downtown. That's moved up to the north side, Hollywood Park, seeing some good rain. And then uh, still some more development now around Palo Alto College, Somerset, seeing some showers and storms there, also around Elmendorf. And then Lavernia up to New Berlin, we're seeing some rain. You can actually see the front right there, and it's behind the front where we're seeing most of this activity. So it is basically just some widespread downpours, and I think we'll continue to see this tr trend into the afternoon. Now, it is going to make the roads a little slick. There's going to be some puddles out there. So as you're traveling today, keep that in mind. 67 degrees. This temperature has continually fallen since that front has come through. 64 Kerrville, 66 Hondo, and then you've got 80s out ahead of the front. 65 Holotus. We're down to 61 now, Perny Stage. So it's almost chilly out there with the cloud cover and that potential for rain. We're going to keep it in the 60s all afternoon and evening long. 70% chance of rain. You could see some thunder mixed in there, some pockets of heavy rain, and we'll sit in the 60s tonight. More showers possible tomorrow morning before all this comes to an end. We'll take a look at some of those rainfall totals, at least estimated totals, coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you so much, Justin. Today, the Supreme Court is taking up faith and First Amendment. This comes after a high school football coach was suspended for praying on the football field after games. His name is Joe Kennedy. He started praying after games in midfield after games in 2008 at a school near Seattle. Well, soon some of the players were joining him, but the school district found that problematic, saying that he was crossing a constitutional line. While parents are split on whether he should continue, officials told Kennedy he could no longer pray with players 
if he wanted to keep his job. It's now in the hands of the Supreme Court. Well, younger people in the United States are not happy with President Joe Biden. A new poll out shows only 41% of young Americans approve of the president's job so far. That's actually down 5% from this past fall and nearly down 20% from last spring. The Harvard Institute of Politics polled people between the ages of 18 years old and 29 years old. However, other recent surveys are seeing the same trend. The big issue, the economy. Now, the survey also showed many young people see the current political system as ineffective. Many states are scaling back on their reporting on COVID-19. Experts are worrying, though, less frequent reporting could stall efforts to delay outbreaks. One year ago, all 50 states were reporting new cases daily, but that's trailed off. Now half of states report once a week, and Florida is down to every two weeks. At a federal level, the White House COVID-19 team still publishes its community profile report with trends and indicators. So with the Biden administration's mask requirement for major public transportation no longer in effect, some people out there are still wondering, will I be protected if I'm the only one wearing a mask? Sarah Costa breaks it down. As airlines, trains, and various bus companies have announced they will no longer require passengers or crew members to wear masks, some people responded with relief. Uh, Yay, no more masks! Others with slight panic. I'll always wear my mask. While many companies like Delta and Amtrak say those who still want to stay masked up are encouraged to do so, the question arises, if you're wearing a mask but no one else is, are you still protected? According to CNN's chief medical correspondent, one-way masking still has benefits. It does depend to some extent on, on what kind of mask you're wearing. As we have heard throughout the pandemic, cloth and surgical masks do not offer as much protection for the wearer as others. Whereas if you look at these high filtration masks and N95, KN95 masks, these are, these are very good masks. They have significant filtration, they have electrostatic fibers that really help sort of uh, screen out the virus, but they're not perfect. Gupta says it also depends on the ventilation where you are. Airplanes are probably one of the safest places because of the high air exchange rates, and we haven't seen significant outbreaks on airplanes. And of course, the more transmissible the virus, the greater the chances are of you getting infected. So while one-way masking isn't as effective in protecting from COVID-19, wearing one can still be a very good mitigation measure, especially if you're also vaccinated and boosted. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Welcome back. You may have seen this on social media, but it was a jaw-dropping plane stunt late last night that went wrong. Two cousins attempting to plane swap instead of one of the two planes spiraled out of control instead and crashed. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Blue plane is out of control. This is the moment when things took a turn. Diving. The daring aviation stunt that went wrong as millions were watching. Cousins Luke Akins and Andy Farrington attempting the first ever plane swap 12,000 feet up. While in a free fall, they were each supposed to jump from their planes and land in the other. The pair jumping out as their planes entered the nosedive. But then one plane flips over, going into a downward spiral. With the silver plane still controlled, Luke chases it down and climbs into the cockpit. I'm recovered. But Andy still in free fall, dodging the planes and activating his emergency parachute. How you doing, Andy? You okay? I'm good. You all right? Rough. I don't know what happens, Andy. Yeah, it just went, and instead of stopping in that 90-degree dive, it just kept going. Nice to see you again. Both cousins visibly relieved on the ground, Andy emotional as he hugged his children. Said you're just happy everybody's here and good and all that stuff, but just disappointed. This is the best outcome of a bummer situation, really. The planes were relying on a state of the art autopilot system that was supposed to keep them steady in free fall at 140 miles per hour. The FAA had denied the organizers' request for an exemption for the aircraft to be unmanned and is now investigating. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. You know what? I'm just happy everyone came out safe. I hope they never do that again. I, in, I, we talked about it in the 9 a.m. a little bit. I said, I've always thought about skydiving, but never to that extent. No. No. No, that's, no thank you. That's <laughs> <laughs> Justin, you're not interested in skydiving? Mm -mm. No. Nope. Thank you. 
Uh, 76 so far today. 66 was a low. Actually, our current temperature, we've seen temperatures fall. At the airport officially only 11 hundredths of an inch of rain, but there's more to come, more to go around. We're going to take a look at that radar once again coming up. One, here are your top headlines for Cheddar News. Tesla founder and CEO Elon Musk admitted on Twitter over the weekend that he confronted Microsoft founder Bill Gates about possibly shorting some $500 million of Tesla stock. Now, investors short stock when they bet its value will fall. Musk also declined Gates' invitation to collaborate with him on a climate change initiative. Meanwhile, the world's largest particle accelerator was turned back on over the weekend. That after a three-year maintenance break, the 17-mile-long Hadron Collider is located outside of Geneva, Switzerland. The European Organization for New Nuclear research is saying that the Collider's third run started on Friday and will last until 2026. And the European Union over the weekend signed ambitious new legislation. This is now forcing tech companies to take greater responsibility for the content that is published on their platforms. Tech platforms will also be required now to explain their algorithms to researchers, lawmakers, and their users. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. All right, well, back here in San Antonio, we have rain. Raining at your house? Uh, I've been here all day, so I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Raining at my house. How about yeah. you, Justin? I think so. I think so. I'm going to have to check the rain gauge to be sure. I don't think I've got as much as some people do, but hey, you know what? Uh, we've got more chances coming along as we get into the afternoon and this evening. So it is going to be hit or miss. Some folks may get up to two inches. Others may only get a half an inch. That's just kind of the nature of this activity. But at least it is fairly widespread and uh, there are some pockets uh, of heavy rain out there. So this is the latest radar. We can see the front right there. That's what's helping to give lift to these showers and storms. And we showed you the pretty heavy rain that's moving through New Braunfels and parts of Kamau County. Also seeing some new development down here on the uh, southwest side of town, places like Somerset, uh, down cl close to Palo Alto College. We're seeing these storms lift off to the north around Lackland, getting some uh, good rain. Just to the west of you, there along 410 at Highway 90, the rain is coming down at a pretty good clip. We're also noticing that we're getting some uh, good development up around Medina Lake Place. It's already got some good rain last night, and you see a little bit more today. Bandera, you had a nice little thunderstorm come through. Some lightning and thunder there. Thankfully, no severe weather. This is mostly just rain. We have not had any reports really of severe weather other than a couple storms in Valverde County. And then you've got this batch of pretty heavy rain working out to the north and east. This is starting to work into New Braunfels. Now, keep in mind, radar sites about right here. So the rain they probably doesn't look as heavy as it actually is, but uh, we are seeing some some good rain in parts of New Braunfels and just to your north and west Smithson Valley up towards Canyon Lake. Now getting some very heavy rain right over the lake, in fact. So our reservoirs are going to benefit from all of this rain as well. And I said we'd uh, look at the rainfall total, so let's do that. Uh, these are just going to be radar estimated, but they'll give us a good idea here of just how much rain we've received. And we'll pause it. And uh, places like shirts, that's where we've seen the biggest totals so far today. We'll query that, and it's about 2.2 inches. So as I mentioned, some places are going to pick up as much as 2 inches of rain from this. Uh, they're on the southwestern portion of Kamau County, about an inch. You get close to the airport, we've only picked up about uh, a tenth of an inch or so. That estimates half an inch. It's probably a little overdone. Uh, and then there's some spots here on the northwest side that maybe haven't gotten any rain yet. But as I mentioned, there still are some more chances as the day wears on uh, because I think we'll continue to see this into the evening and overnight hours as well. We'll clear that and uh, you'll see too that we've got some more development out to the west. There's more energy that will be coming in uh, from the west that will help to probably enhance our rainfall situation a little bit. So there you go. There's the latest and we've seen some storms I should mention out towards Shiner, Luling and Gonzales too. So this is a pretty widespread event. Even Floresville, Floresville down there towards Poth starting to get some new showers and storms. So this is what the computer model is showing us. This is around 5 o'clock today. Still has some rain in the area. And then even going into tonight, it's going to be kind of waves of, of rain. You may hear some rumbles of thunder mixed in there. And then by tomorrow morning, still some showers around. 
and it's possible these showers may stick around through midday before we finally get them to go away. Cloud cover is going to be around tomorrow, so that'll keep temperatures on the cool side. Rainfall potential. I mentioned this is going to be hit or miss. We're, we're going to say around an inch, but not everyone will get to, uh, get to that point, whereas some folks may get isolated spots of, of two inches plus. So uh, we'll keep a close eye on the radar. If you do get one of those heavier storms, there could be some flooding. So messy driving conditions, especially this evening, and as uh, you may be running your errands later today, just know there's going to be some puddles on the road. Uh, there could be some street flooding underneath those heavier showers and storms, and we can't rule out severe weather. We have not seen a lot of that today, and with us being behind the front, we're not looking for a lot of that, but it is possible. Can't rule it out. 67 degrees at the airport. North northwesterly winds at about 13, and temperatures They've really fallen off behind this front. 66 Kerrville, 67 here in town, 68 New Braunfels out ahead of the front. We've got 80. So with clouds and rain and that cooler air working in, it's not going to get all that warm today. In fact, it'll stay on the cool side. 67 by 2 p.m., 60% chance of rain, 70% as we head into the afternoon and evening. If your kids have soccer practice this evening, baseball practice, eh, it may get canceled. Northeasterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. You'll want to check ahead on that. Uh, chances of rain continue into tonight. And then uh, tomorrow we mentioned that there is that chance through about the first half of the day, 69. 79 Wednesday, 80s by the end of the work week and some more small chances for, of rain over the weekend. We'll be right back. A notoriously brutal divorce case from the 1960s, the real life basis for a new limited series. CNN's David Daniel talks with the stars of the new show that is streaming on Prime. The famous Mrs. Sweeney, Captain Ian Campbell. I know who you are. I once saw you at the party. I said, there's a girl I'm going to marry. Who did you say that to? My wife. I rather think it's why she divorced me. Claire Foy and Paul Bettany Wu then go to war with each other in a very British scandal. The warning signs for the Duke and Duchess of Argyle appear early. When the money runs out, because it will, the campaign to remove you will begin. And if you're not very careful, you too will be left with nothing. Don't tell me what to do, because I won't be told by you or Ian or anyone. He kind of believes that she can get everything that she wants whenever she wants it. Um, and that's also weirdly one of the best things about her as well, because there's a complete lack of limits with her. She doesn't really have any limits. She doesn't really know when to stop, which I really loved because I have lots. And so it was really nice to play someone who didn't understand the concept of when enough is enough. You're drunk last night, you're drunk now. It stops me from shooting myself in the face. Because I could just shoot you in the face. I think his worst quality is a total inability to um, imagine somebody else's perspective um, and that he can only feel sympathy toward himself. Infidelities and cruelties lead to a very public divorce trial. Basically, people will go for the juggler and do whatever. And unfortunately, with women, the easiest way to do that is their behavior and how unwomanly and unmotherly and, you know, their sexuality is the quickest way, basically, to get at them as being sort of um, unsavory characters. Do you have a photograph, love letters, diaries? Because I do. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, a well-known dress from an iconic movie could now sell for more than a million dollars. One of Dorothy's dresses from Wizard of Oz will be up for sale just next month. Bonhams is auctioning off this blue and white dress that Judy Garland wore for the scene at the Witch's Castle. Now, this is only the second complete final costume with both blue and white pinafer dress and blouse known to even exist. During the pandemic, a retired drama professor actually discovered the dress while going through boxes from his former office. The fabric label is inscribed Judy Garland. Now, it turns out the dress was donated to the school by actress Mercedes McCambridge back in 1973. The auction set for May 24th in Los Angeles. That is crazy. Just going through an old box, you find a million dollar dress. It's too bad they didn't have it preserved in any uh, way. They didn't know it was there. That's crazy. All right. You're right. A lot going on on SA Live today. Checking in with Mike and Fiona. Well, Wait till you see what we are cooking up today. <laughs> yes. See, yes, there's a clue because it's seafood. All right. Well, yeah. Gary Skinner, of course, the owner of Conroy's uh, Pub and Grill is here. And we are going to be making one of your most popular dishes, right? That's correct. 
We got the bacon wrapped shrimp. Mike's going to town on it right now, rolling it up. He's got the jalapeno, the cheese. He's got this, he's, he's good at this. We got to get him in our kitchen. You're doing great there. I like to eat food. Oh, yeah. That's why that and uh, some of the great cream dishes they had to go along with these popular dishes. And it's the, the menu that's been brought up by the customers. Yes, we're going to fill you in about their people's choice yep. menu. And Mother's Day is coming up. So we are sharing a delicious lavender cookies recipe from the Food Nanny with you. And speaking of Mother's Day, you got to find the perfect gift. Who better than to help you shop than Stephanie Pena Frost? And you are shopping right around town. Shop local. Buy your mom some really cool little Mother's Day gifts from locally made artists here in San Antonio and the surrounding areas. Love it. Perfect present for mom. Great gift guide, so stick around for that. Do you have to wait till after Memorial Day? <laughs> I know you know how to rock the white pant, white jean look, so we are going to help the rest of you rock it as well. Stefan Delgado from Bear Essentials shows you how. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live, so stick around on this April 25th. All right, welcome back. Let's take one last look at the radar. Still some heavy rain up around the New Braunfels, San Marcos area, getting some new development across southern parts of Bear County. So these downpours will continue. It's not going to rain all day, but we are going to see some off and on rain, some pockets of heavy rain too. There could be some minor flooding in spots, so just take it slow if you're going to be out and about. Rain chances continue tonight and into early tomorrow, guys. Thanks, Justin. I tell you what, if you're going to have rainfall this is the right guy yes absolutely all right that is it for us here on the news at noon wait it's time now for essay live on this monday it starts right now celebrate san antonio coming to you live from historic market square this is essay live i like to say april 25th because it's not too hot not too cold all you need is a light jacket <laughs> I love <laughs> Hello soundbite. and happy Monday, April 25th, as you just heard, Miss Rhode <laughs> Island's perfect date there from Miss Congeniality. Good afternoon, I'm Fiona Gorstiza. <laughs> and I'm Mike Osterhage, and with that in mind, the perfect date. <laughs> yes, that's our question of the day, okay? We're asking you to describe your perfect date. Let us know at SLI Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and look for your answer a little later in the show. What would be your perfect date? Um, I always enjoyed something that gave a little bit of friendly competition, okay? No kidding. <laughs> well, it also kind of helped you get to know each other. My perfect date mm -hmm. is stuffed with goat cheese and then wrapped in I bacon. Knew it. I knew you would do that. I've had those before. They're really good. <laughs> okay. okay. We said date. We didn't say what kind of date here, so. <laughs> so let us know in our life case that. All right, you may see that a little later as we said. All right. All right, David Reyes, the executive chef from Conroy's and Gary Skinner, the owner, are here to cook up some really good food. And speaking of things wrapped in bacon, we are wrapping stuff in bacon right now. Gentlemen, good yes. afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon. Thank what you. What are we making here? Well, we have a bacon wrapped shrimp, which has our special sauce on it. We also have a okay. shrimp and grits, the way it's done. Right. Old fashioned style, the way we do it, we saute that. You got Mike down there, he's rolling up the bacon wrapped shrimp for us, which he's doing a nice job. I think he's getting faster every time. Yeah. How, how, how am I doing, Chef? You're doing, he's doing great. great. Right now. I just we're, keep we're gonna make it. the shrimp down You're this end. Excellent. So, many? yep, just put, just right put about three in it. there. That'd be good, you got that sizzling. You got some right in there. Get that off there a little bit. Now we can there you go. Now, one of the things that you've had shrimp and grits before, this is their version of the grits. And how'd you come up with this? I came up with my grandmother. Came with, uh, she used to make tamales. Yeah. So we left, had leftover oak, uh, masa, so the masa I did is put cheddar cheese on there, jalapeno, red bell pepper, <laughs> and use it up and make some grits right there. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm just gonna borrow these. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Easy to plan. So, and the uh, Parmesan cheese and the uh, cheddar cheese will help the grits out and give it a nice sear in the top, mm -hmm. like you see it right here in the presentation. And we're gonna sear for a good like Perfect. three, four minutes. Then we'll just go ahead and saute it after too. Okay. And, and are these some of the dishes you said that there's a people's choice menu at your place? Yeah. This is what people's choice what come up with. So. What Conrad yeah. did is when we started our menu, it, it took us a year and a month to make our menu. And we actually did it in paper. And you would come in and you'd order off pieces of paper that we put together. And then after we got ten groups of people that gave us thumbs up. It took us a year and a month to make the menu. Uh -huh. And this is how we came up with all the different dishes because everybody has different taste buds. So we have five to six different types of dishes that are on the menu. So that's a very unique about uh, Conroy's, which is nice. Okay. And so what is the trick there to kind of the get trick that we're going to So what we've done is you here. make, flip it over? Yes. Okay. Sir. Let me flip it. Yep. Yes. 
We've got They're a like lot of cakes. cooks in this kitchen here today. Oh, look at <laughs> Gorgeous, those look nice and we'll golden. We'll make their good brown sear. It's a Parmesan cheese and the cheddar cheese you put in there. Okay. That's what gives it a nice sear on top. So if I was doing this at home, just make grits the regular way. And just add put cheddar and cheese and Parmesan cheese and jalapeno. And you can put salt, pepper, and garlic and bell pepper. And then I stick it on a, a sheet pan as thick as I want it and put it in the fridge, right? Yes, sir. And it'll come out like gelatin. Oh, wow. And it'll come out like pancakes. You can cut it in any kind of shape you like. She's going to town down here. She's got the sauce going in. And she's got, got the garlic sauce over there, which she's yep. making over there. Yep. And you've got two and different types of sauces with the two different types of shrimp. Perfect. That's the garlic Perfect. Parmesan cheese sauce right there. It which you put it on there. It's going to balance that out with the grits right there. Perfect. It's got a sautéing real nice in there with all the sauce. Nothing like what nice, else is on the menu at your place? Well, we've got double bone and pork chops. Believe it or not, we have orange chicken fried rice. Mm -hmm. We have chicken fried chicken. Our pizzas are made New York style in a big pizza oven. Holds 24 pizzas the old-fashioned way. Uh -huh. uh, we great. have homemade soups Beautiful. every day, so it's very unique with everything we do. And if you want nachos, we got awesome nachos on the menu too. So you have a variety: sea bass, salmon, okay, a variety of different and everything from fresh and scratch. Oh, serve this up like And speaking this. of some of the pizza, you guys have a deal for SA Live viewers, that, right? That's correct. Yeah. So if you come in and mention SA Live, you'll get a pizza for $10, which is a great deal. Okay. Throw those shrimp on there. So what you want to do, yeah, go ahead and take it. Go. Okay. Put the shrimp over the top of it. There Perfect. Ooh, this looks so right good. Top. Two locations, right? That's correct. Yes. We have one in Fair Oaks and one off of 281 in Stone Oak. Okay. Okay. You can right check us out at ConroysUSA.com. Okay. A little sauce on there. Yep, just right pour it right top. across it. There we go. There we go. Yep. Ooh. Oh, oh, there you go. Ooh. And we got a little, right. <laughs> little part for you to put it on top. And there, that and there it is. Taste. We got <laughs> shrimp jalapeno oh, grits right there. <laughs> it's hot. And again, the menu, people's choice, this right? Made the people's, it's made by the people. Everybody oh. is a people's choice menu. Heavens to Betsy, that's really good stuff. <laughs> Congratulations, people. You came up with a really, really good <laughs> Thank you so much. What would, what would be your best thing on the menu, your favorite thing? Well, it depends on the category because we have so many different categories. So if you come in and you want Italian food, our chicken parmesan is amazing. If you wanted some chicken alfredo. So we have so many different items that are on the menu that are very tasteful. So it depends. Like I mean, just like you just made one of our specialties, which is our shrimp and grits, which it's melted in your mouth. Speaking of specialties, it's an award, right? As yes. well? What yes. is that? We got, actually, we, our double bone and pork chop got the chef's award. So that was that's because all of our chefs do such a great job on it. We put it on online and everybody said it was really good. So it's it's thick. It's this big. You can't even go into HEB and get a double bone and pork chop. You have to go to a butcher to get it, you know. And so it's thick. So it takes about 15 minutes to make. But there's a special sauce that Chef Dave, Dave makes. We put it on there and smothered over and it melts in your mouth. It's and really good. you said good. you've got a prime rib that's... We do prime rib on, on Fridays. Okay. So we do a variety of different foods. So when you come in, it's like when you come with the family, you come in and everybody can make a choice, even the kids' menu. It is delicious. Yes. Well, Conroy has two locations, one in Fair Oaks Ranch and one in Stone Oak. For more information, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code on your screen. Well, this is one place if you need ideas to take mom out to eat on Mother's Day, and you can still make a nice treat for her at home, too. So we're continuing with the recipe from cookbook author and mom of four kids, Liza Heaps, also known as the Food Nanny. Yes, so today's Mom Day Monday includes our Jen Tobias Strusky and her daughter whipping up a sweet treat with a special ingredient. Mother's Day is around the corner, and what better way to surprise mom than with a homemade dessert? Today, we get help from none other than the food nanny. Now, she's a mom of four kiddos, has her own cookbook using kumut flour. So she'll explain more about that, but I'm super excited for today's recipe. It is lavender cookies. Yes, lavender cookies. So I'm very excited. I've made these already before. It's one of my new favorite cookbooks. And together, we will show you just how easy it is to whip up some lavender cookies for mom. And they look so pretty, too. And Lizzie joins us today with her beautiful mother. I'm so excited. I, I would have Hi. My daughter, too. I love it. And your yes. daughter is so beautiful. So beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> We're making today one of my favorites is uh, things in the world is lavender. So I'm super excited about this recipe. 
Well, then you're like us. We're obsessed with lavender. We love it. We have it as decor all throughout the house. Yeah. Come on. We love it. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Is it because it takes us back to France? I, I don't know. Yeah. We love it. It takes us back to France, Europe, but we have it here dry. We even try to grow it. So I have some of mine here, but I love that you guys are going to walk us through the process now. So I can't believe you made that. That's well, it's super easy. Cookies are easy. The trick that we have now been doing for the last few years is we always use cold butter in our cookies. I feel like it makes it so they don't go super flat, but it, you just, you mix it up. You've got a little bit of butter, sugar, some eggs. Look at my fresh farm eggs that I get outside. Look at how green they are. They're like every color. Every color. They're so beautiful. And then you've got some Camus flour. You've got a little bit of baking soda and you're adding a tablespoon of the edible lavender into the cookie mix. Not very much at all. No. Because it goes a long way. Right. But the main ingredient is our Camus flour. It's so much better for you and it ups the quality of your life and the taste. So one cup at a time, we are going to add the dry to the wet. So the next best thing that you do is you have a little bit of sugar and you put some of the lavender in it and you're rolling the cookie in there, kind of like a snickerdoodle. All right, more sugar. Can't go wrong with that. You're rolling it. And then I love to bake the cookies on parchment paper. A lot of people don't do that, but we do. We the love brown it. is the best too, if you can find it. Ah, they smell so good. But here we go, this is what they look like. For seven minutes, they will go in, then they will come out delicious. Super excited. Here we go. And right. then you just get the finished product. I'm very obsessed about not overdoing your cookie. It's gotta be a little bit chewy. It's gotta be good, but um, they're they're the best. And these freeze amazing. Cookies freeze amazing. Amazing. Kamut is all we've now been using for a while. It's been like over five years now, but it has changed our life for the better. It's known for taste, texture, digestibility. It has less gluten than any white flour, but really it's upgraded everything. Most people go, well, then it must be a bread flour. No, no. we're making these yummy cookies and cakes and all of it. Lizzie, I know that your love for cooking is a big influence comes from your, your mom's. So my mom was just the mom that was in the kitchen every day cooking for her family. She believed in the importance of having family dinner time. I'm the baby of seven children and that is where we bonded. Well, I love that and I love the idea of those family dinners. It's very important. All of these recipes and the flour, where can people order this from you, Lizzie? The best way to do it is you can order the starter kit and you save money. Okay. You get the book, you get a bag of flour, you get our life-changing salt that we import from France. It's the marriage, we call it. And you get our little spoon. teaspoon. It's a four and one. It's a tablespoon, a teaspoon, a half and a fourth. Okay, perfect. Do you guys want to join in and take a bite together? Oh yeah, sure. We've already had, We've already had a few. <laughs> <laughs> and for more information on the Food Nanny and Kamut and how to order your starter kit, just go to salive.com, click the As Seen on SA Live tab. Ready? Mm -hmm. So good. Thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day Happy to you. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, thanks. Still ahead on SA Live, did Mike's Fiesta look inspire you to wear <laughs> maybe the white jean or white pant, but you're not sure how to pull it off? We've got an expert showing us how to look white hot in white jeans. But first, looking for that one-of-a-kind gift for mom, how you can make her feel so special and support our local shops and boutiques. That's next on SA Live.